Vishvam Shabhajatam Adhanavadamutam Vidanustam Sivivam Shadvetam Shadvetam Krishna Sahitam Krishna Chaitam Devam Sridhartha Krishna Padam Shabhajatavita Sri Vishakam Vidanustam E Krishna Karana Sankhava This kirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is the recommended form of yoga in the present age. I was in the Target today and I saw there are mats, there's a whole big sign, yoga, mm -hmm. and people are practicing yoga. But that yoga is just for staying fit. That yoga is to stay young and healthy, for a happy, having a happy life in this world. That's yoga. But that's not yoga. <laughs> yoga means uh, to advance in spiritual consciousness and ultimately to connect with the Supreme Consciousness or the uh, origin of everything, the personality of God. Uh, yoga means connection. So to reestablish our connection with the Supreme is the real purpose of yoga. Uh, every one of us has a relation. Uh, we have a relationship uh, with our parents, because we come from our parents, and then grandparents, and then great-grandparents. So that we uh, have a relation. But the origin of all is the original source. You go, your father, his father, his father, his father, finally you'll come to the original father. What's the source of this? What's the source of this? This comes from this, this comes from this, this comes from... Finally you come to the original or the source of everything. So that source of everything uh, is called uh, Brahma, or the Absolute Truth, or Krishna. So this chanting, Hare Krishna,
So uh, this kirtan is the most effective means of yoga in the present age. And it's described by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaito Dharma Martin. Uh, people may see that these people are just chanting and singing the same thing again and again. And uh, they're not very good music. Of course, the musicians got better. <laughs> but uh, we're uh, ultimately not depending on musical quality. Uh, even when we're uh, a batch of amateurs, uh, we're singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Or we're very expert musicians, we're still singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So what are these people doing? Singing the same thing again and again. So that's described by Lord Chaitanya. Chaito Dharma Dharpana means mirror. Dharpana means mirror. Yeah, I forgot to ask if you could check your cell phones and see if they're team. Cell phone check. Dharpana means mirror. Uh, Chaito Dharpana. The mind is compared to a mirror. In which we see so many things. And finally we have to see ourselves. But uh, the mirror is not clean. The mirror of the mind is not clean. It picks up so many impressions, so many notions, uh, and those impressions are compared to dust. Uh, you come to some house that hasn't been lived in for 20 years, and you see the mirror, but the mirror is all dust, and nothing can be seen in such a mirror. Or even if a mirror is a little not so dusty, it's hard to see. These days we don't have mirrors, we have computer screens. When your computer screen gets too dusty, then it's hard to see what's there. So the mind, when the mind is not clear, when the mind is dusty, then we can't see things properly, or we see things a little with distortion. We see things in a distorted fashion. We can't tell what it is, or we mistake what it is. So, Chaito Dharpana Marjan, the Hare Krishna Mantra is a transcendental sound that acts to purify the mind, to cleanse the dust from the mirror of the mind. Uh, we may understand the mantra, we may not understand the mantra, we may believe, we may not believe, we may philosophically analyze or not philosophically analyze, but the sound is transcendental. Uh, it's called uh, achintya. Achintya means beyond our power to understand simply by uh, mental speculation. Uh, because abhinna tan nama damina, there's no difference between Krishna, the sound, and Krishna, the absolute. The sound itself is transcendental. So it will act. It will act. By uh, hearing, this transcendental sound, the mind becomes purified. And especially if we regularly chant and hear, then the mind becomes um, clarified. The dust starts to 
get cleared away from the mirror of the mind. Change the Dharma and Vajra. We're all interested in, and we take our bath every day and soap and uh, whatever else they're selling out at the pharmacy these days. Uh, shower gel, yes. Soap is out, it's shower gel. But we take our bath very nicely with not soap and water, shower gel and water. Uh, but that's just for the body. That's just for the body. But we have two bodies. The, uh, mm, yeah, gross and subtle. The, the body that we see, we call it the gross body, the one that's tangible or seeable and touchable. And then there's a subtle body. The body that consists of the mind and the intelligence, the sense of self. Now that's the, the subtle body. Um, we may not see it, but it, it's real. Um, I may not see the mind, but I know that you have a mind. You're not mindless. We can see that a person's intelligent. Um, even the monkeys, we can see they're a little intelligent. They can solve problems. And human beings are more intelligent. Even cats and dogs are a little intelligent. But the human beings are supposed to be the most intelligent. So that intelligence and mind that form another body, subtle body. Uh, and as the gross body gets dirty and needs cleaning, every day it gets dirty just by being here. So the subtle body is like that, but we never clean it. We just throw more dirt at it, or people are throwing dirt at, at our minds. Uh, commercials, advertisements, well, this year they'll throw a lot of dirt in the form of uh, re-elect me or elect me and throw him out. Mundane sound. Sound that has no ultimate meaning. And are, we're being bombarded by all of these sounds, so many sounds through the course of the day. And the, the mind becomes, uh, and philosophy also, people are mouthing off their philosophy. Uh, well, I think blah, 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 blah. Professor such and such says blah, 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 blah. All going on and on. And the mind becomes pretty covered with dust. So this chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the uh, very easy and effective means of cleaning the mind. Clearing away the dust from the mirror of the mind. Jaita Dharpana Marjanam and Pavamaha Dabhagni Nirvara. Uh, Pava is this our present material existence is called Pava. Pava. Uh, it implies uh, birth and death. We're born into this world, and birth means jata sihi druvo That because I'm born, I have to die. And druvam janma ratasya And because I die, I have to be taken another birth. It's not that this one body is everything. We're traveling from a child's body to a young person's body, old person's body. And you get another change of body. Punarjana, again taking birth. And again going through another life. And another birth, and another birth, and another birth, and another death, and another birth, and another death. Sometimes in human life, sometimes lower species of life, sometimes here, sometimes there. Lord Chaitanya calls this uh, Mahatava, uh, a forest fire of birth and death. I think someplace 
out in the Midwest or something, they're having a forest fire at the moment. Mm -hmm. California? Okay. Hmm? Every year. Every year. So the forest fire is something they can't do very much about. It grows and it grows and it grows. And you'll, you'll hear on the news, uh, well, we're hoping for rain, but we don't know. <laughs> because unless it rains, what can they do? They'll aim their little hoses at it, they'll throw some buckets, maybe they'll spray something for it. They can't do very much. Uh, those forest fires grow way out of control. In uh, Australia, they have forest fires with gum trees. Eucalyptus trees, and as soon as one tree catches fire, and the sap finally bursts out, and that sap becomes flammable, and that spreads more like a spray of flames in all directions, and then the next gum tree catches fire. So from one tree to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and then you get a whole forest fire, and what can you do? So Baba Mahadava, Lord Chaitanya compares this present material existence to a forest fire. Birth after birth after birth. And each birth means so much trouble. In life between birth and death, there's so many problems. So Baba Mahadava, Nirvana, Lord Chaitanya says, that as the forest fire, the fire can be extinguished by rain clouds, the forest fire of birth and death can be extinguished by this kirtan, this chanting of meditation. It's not simply a uh, the people getting together for a ritual uh, or getting some pious credit. But, you know, it's not that. It's uh, direct association with transcendence. It's direct association with Krishna. So when we come in touch with Krishna, we become uh, gradually free from material existence. We become free from material existence. Because material existence is due to separation from Krishna. Krishna's nature is that Krishna is eternal. And our nature is that we're eternal, because we're part of Krishna. You analyze the drop and the ocean, they're made of the same substance. Only the drop is very small, the ocean is very big. So we're of the same substantial nature as Krishna. But we turn away from Krishna. We become interested in everything but Krishna. And that means we become captured by Maya, or material existence. Material existence is practically symbolized by the material body. Uh, spirit is permanent, and matter is temporary, two different substances. So this, when we identify with this body, we, we chain ourselves to birth and death. We implicate ourselves to birth and death. And the more we go on improving our life in terms of bodily expansion, the more deeply we're becoming implicated in birth and death. I think my house, my money, my country, my family, my bank balance, my plans, my my company, my... And I forget who I am. I forget my spiritual nature. I become involved with material body and material things as if this were everything. And so, practically voluntarily, I'm implicating myself more and more in material existence in the name of progress. The more I become entangled in material existence, the more I think, yes, I make, I'm making progress. 
is called by So, like a forest fire, it just goes on raging. But this chanting of Hare Krishna acts like rain on the forest fire. And gradually the forest fire starts to subside, and finally it goes out. So, Paumaha Dava Pinyu and Shreya Koreva Chandrika Vitaru. Shreya means ultimate benefit. There are two words in Vedic language, Sanskrit language. Uh, Shreya and Preya. Uh, Preya means immediate benefit. Immediate benefit. Immediate profit, immediate gain, immediate gratification, immediate something. Immediate benefit. And Shreya means ultimate benefit or long term benefit. The, in ordinary affairs, a child is at school, but he wants to play because he wants immediate happiness, immediate enjoyment. But the parents or the teachers say, no, you have to study your lessons, you have to, because they're thinking about his long term benefit. They're thinking in 20 years, 30 years. And he's only thinking now. So long term. And of course, that long term benefit is of no, no ultimate benefit. But relatively speaking. So Shreya means the real welfare of everyone. There are so many welfare workers. But they're concerned with short term benefit either an immediate handout, give this man some food, give this man some clothing, or they think, uh, teach this man a trade, teach this man something, then he'll be self-sufficient. So they're thinking a little longer term. But even that longer, what they call long-term thinking, is what we call short-term thinking because they're thinking in terms of this one lifetime, at the most. Usually they don't even think of that, they think of some very shorter period. But the big long term, those who have long vision, they're thinking of one lifetime, or maybe they think about a little bit beyond that. They're thinking about uh, what we're leaving for our children and grandchildren, what they call visionaries. They think in terms of two or three generations. That's also short-term benefit. Uh, first of all, I'm thinking in terms of my generation, the next generation. But what about me? The next generation has got better schools or better highways. Meanwhile, where am I? That's these visionaries don't take into account. Because they're thinking in terms of the body. My body will cease to exist, but the next body will go on. But where will you be, sir? That they don't know, because so much dust is on the line. So the kirtan takes into account the ultimate benefit, or longest term benefit, of oneself and of others because it extinguishes the forest fire of birth and death, it cleanses the mind, and therefore it brings about the real welfare of everyone. Shreya Koreva Chandrika Vitara. Chandrika means the moon. The kirtan is compared to the waxing moon. The moon starts out like a little sliver, gradually grows, grows, until you get the full moon. And when the full moon is there, then there's uh, very cool, soothing rays, and it illuminates the whole sky. When the full moon is there, of course, we stay in, indoors most of the time, we'll be driving cars on railway highways. But in 
countryside when the full moon is there. And you can see as if in the day. And it's very beautiful and pleasant. So the kirtan spreads the full moon of the ultimate welfare for every living being. Shreya Kore Vachandrika and Vidya Vadivina. Vidya Vadivina. It's the life of transcendental knowledge. Uh, vidya means knowledge or education. These days we think of education in terms of universities, schools, colleges. Uh, that's not education. No. Actually, that's called Avidya. The opposite of education. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, the more one becomes educated, the more he becomes an ass. <laughs> because he's trained in so many things, so many things, so many things. But he's missing the most important thing. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know the purpose of his life. But he's got a certificate, and he can take his certificate between his teeth and go from door to door and like a little god. As the dust is cleared away, one appreciates the chanting more and more. Rupa Goswami, the perfected soul, said, there's so much, I can't say how much nectar there is just in these two syllables, Krishna. When I chant this transcendental sound, I wish I had thousands of ears and thousands of tongues. Then I could chant. What will I do with two ears and one tongue? If I have thousands, then I could chant. He's appreciating how much nectar. There's like, it's like as if it were dancing in my heart. Pratipadam Purnamrita Ashvada Ashvadana means taste. One tastes. It's not theoretical. It's like eating. You don't have to look in a book to see whether you're full, whether you're satisfied. You experience it. You don't go to the doctor and say, Doctor, am I full? You experience it. So, by direct experience, by chanting Hare Krishna, one will see, yes, actually, this is it. Actually, I'm developing knowledge. Actually, I'm the, what I used to think was pleasure seems like smalls and insignificant. Pratipadam Purnamrita Shravan Sarvatma Snapham. It's like the whole, so the soul itself is just a transcendental. Purity, transcendental happiness, transcendental knowledge. <coughs> Therefore, Lord Chaitanya said, Param Vijayate, Sri Krishna Sankirti. All glories uh, to the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, are, we're fortunate we come in touch with this kirtan yoga, this process. It's not something invented or something unauthorized. It's found in daily literature. And by practical experience, we see it spreading all over the world. In Russia and Africa, South America, North America. not for a small section of people, a small <coughs> section of people. It's for the soul. And the soul is the same everywhere. And it will act like penicillin. We don't say uh, this is uh, Hindu penicillin and this is Christian penicillin or this is American penicillin. Are you American? Yeah, you can take this penicillin. Mm -hmm. It's for everyone. It will act for everyone. So this kirtan, this Krishna kirtan will act for 
any part of the world, to any people anywhere. And therefore, we want to go on chanting and spread this chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama. Let's see what kind of questions there might be. Any question? Yes. In this age of darkness, is it possible to have some light? First of all, why do we say that this is an age of darkness? It's an age of science, scientific progress. It's an age of uh, so much knowledge and well, it's the age of the internet. If anything you want, you can Google it. You can get light from Google. Why do we, why do we say it's an age of darkness? Age of spiritual darkness. Age of spiritual darkness. The, despite so much advancement in computer technology, and nuclear technology, and biochemistry, medicine, engineering, every field. In this field, they're backwards. Who am I? What is the purpose of life? Why am I here? Is this one life, everything? Is there more than this? These questions are practically excluded from public consciousness. And it's like, People don't, I don't get it. It's so out of consideration that people are in darkness. And even materially they're in darkness. How to be happy materially. Even materially, what's happiness? We were talking about spiritual happiness. Let's talk about material happiness. What's material happiness? Material happiness is that you have a nice family, uh, nice family, good food, uh, a lot of money, and so on. But even materially, nice family. Our family life is so nice that half the family is split up. <laughs> And then the children are pulled to this side and that side. Is that material happiness? And we have such good food that you don't know, you don't want to know what's in it. <coughs> what they've done to it. Big fat see tomato, no taste and no nutritional value. Shipped in from 2,000 miles away. Or dead bodies. Animals slaughtered under terrible conditions. And because we can slaughter more and more of them, we think that we become more advanced, more efficient. This age, Kali Yuga, people advance in barbarity. And groups in exploitation on a grand scale. Instead of exploiting my neighbor, I can exploit people on the other side of the world. Instead of throwing stones at the guy across the street, I can throw bombs at on the other side of the world, and that's advancement. All of our money that we're talking about, half the money is from your tax budget goes to fight it. What kind of that? For what?
fighting under false pretenses. So once we start talking about the progress of the present age, uh, we could get a little critical. Uh, because it's not progress based on spiritual understanding. It's not progress based on understanding the spiritual nature of other living beings, our fellow human beings, or the other creatures. It's based on what we want now. So it's an age of darkness. But light is available in the form of this kirtan and in the form of so much spiritual knowledge from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad. That's the karmeta. Kalo Nashri Dasham Esha Pura Narka Arunodita Krishna Svatam Opakate Kyana Paramani In Kali Yuga, in the present age, it's a very degraded age. But so much light is there in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So this Srimad Bhagavatam is not just sentimental religious literature. Srila Bhagavatam is, if you've read Bhagavad Gita, that's the beginning book of spiritual knowledge. And the advanced book of spiritual knowledge is this Srimad Bhagavatam. It's on the bookshelf here. Bhagavad Gita is about how many verses? 600, 700 yeah, verses? 700. 700 verses. Bhagavatam is about 18,000 verses. So much knowledge. Darkness of Kali Yuga and Kirtan is Bhagavad Gita. So much So much Yes? Well, uh, one time we had a discussion about the proper way of chanting, and some of us with busy lives and all that, we don't have fixed time. So the discussion came that chanting while going to the jobs in the car or going to the car. It's not authentic, or it's authentic. What did Srila Prabhupada say to this type of con uh, question? Like, what in your busy life, we don't have time for all that, sit at one and finish. So we, you save our time by go. Well, one thing what is, Kirtaniya Sadahani, use all of your time. Oh. So if you're in your car, you're, you're in your uh, work. So there's smarane in the kala. There's no restriction that this time, that time, any time you can chant Hare Krishna and make the best use of your time. Okay. There's so much time available. Now that said, if we set aside particular time for chanting with concentration, that will help us still more. The, we're all busy. No time, no time. Uh, the key to getting time, uh, of course, we won't talk about it too much tonight because it's almost nine o'clock. <laughs> but the key to getting time is to take rest early. Early to bed, early to rise. Because if you wake up early, then you have the time before everything begins for chanting Hare Krishna. And that's the best time also, that early time. People are missing the best time of their life. People say, I had the time of my life. When did you have the time of your life? Oh, from, from midnight till two in the morning. People are just getting started at 11 o'clock. But the best time in your life is the early morning time, say from three o'clock, four o'clock. People miss the best time. That's the time which is naturally conducive to peacefulness, to concentration, to deep thought. That time is so good. And everyone sleeps through it. It's like sleeping through your birthday or something, you know? You miss the whole thing. 
best time of the day, and we miss it. Between the sheets. So, if we can arrange to take rest early, then we can arrange to get up early. And getting up early means there's your time. Um, like um, in the name of Krishna or any spiritual knowledge is basically transcendental. So it should be most attractive to all the living entities because they are part and parcel and they are hungry for their happiness. But in general, what we see is like generally people are not attracted to that. So Even we're not attracted, we're attracted to something else. Something else, yeah. uh, Rupa Goswami has explained this by a comparison to jaundice. Uh, you know what jaundice is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when jaundice is there, the symptom is that you lose your interest in food. You just don't want to eat anything because the liver is shot. So you look at food and you, know, you look at yogurt, it looks like too much to eat. And sweet things are like bitter. That's jaundice. And how is jaundice <coughs> treated? Of course, now they'll give you gamma blocker shots and all of that. But the standard uh, old way of treating jaundice is by sugarcane mystery. The patient is advised daily to take sugar candy. And the effect of the sugar candy is that it acts to purify the liver. And because it uh, cleanses the liver, gradually the jaundice subsides. So that's the treatment. Take your sugar candy. But for the jaundice patient, sugar candy tastes terrible. It's like bitter. But it doesn't want to take it. But by taking that sugar candy, the liver becomes uh, restored. And the symptom is that gradually that sugar now it starts to taste sweet. And when he's fully cured, then it tastes really sweet. So because we're jaundice patients, and what tastes sweet to the jaundice patient? Alcohol. In, in India, sometimes you get jaundice from bad water. In this country, you get jaundice by uh, liquor, by alcohol. Yeah, the, the drunkards, they kill their livers. That's the, any doctor will, will tell you. Like, those who drink too much damage their livers, and they can get jaundice. So for them, what's tasty, the same thing which is causing their disease, to them is very tasty. And the thing which will cure their disease is bitter. So we're very interested in so many material things which make the disease worse. And we're not interested in the spiritual thing which will But if we gradually are exposed to that spiritual treatment, then it starts to become tasty because the disease starts to subside. And when we're in our healthy condition, we say, this is very tasty, this is very sweet. So somehow we have to introduce that treatment or we have to, with a little knowledge, take that treatment, all right, I may not taste so much now or it may taste even a little bitter now. Let me go on taking it. We'll come to the point of I have a follow up on that, like, okay. kind of, um, like basically, when we say we can or we, we, we should do it in a mood of service, in a mood of service, like uh, for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna, we should chant. But at the same time, when we don't have taste, then we don't chant. So then these are two contradictory things. Like we don't have taste, so we don't chant. But 
the chanting is actually a service to, for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, like those, how to understand these two concepts? Well, a little bit changing our mentality. We don't. We're, we should chant for the pleasure of Krishna and, and the spiritual master. Uh, but we don't like the chanting, or the chanting it seems like uh, uh, a chore, or discipline, or a burden. So we don't like it, we don't do it, and we don't do it. So we, the more we don't do it, the less we like it, and so on. <laughs>